Hey guys, Cell here. Welcome back to more Fate Grand Order. Time for more of the murder of the Kogetsuka. Okita! Wanna come home? God dang it. That's like the fifth ticket I've tried to use in for her. Whatever, man. Whatever. Let's go. Now, these are all the parts that are currently out. This is section nine now with a question mark, which I'm assuming is how you vote. So, yeah, there may very well be another episode after this one. I don't know why I said maybe. There definitely will be one. Alright. This quest has no battles. Start. Murder at the Kogetsu Khan. No more than one secret room or passage is allowable. Alright. Those sandwiches we had for breakfast were delicious. Yep. Not a bad breakfast, I have to admit. I worked pretty hard on those, so I'm glad you all liked them. Yeah, they weren't bad. Best thing about sandwiches is that you don't need any fancy utensils to eat them. This tea is delicious too. Did you do something special with the tea leaves? That would be m my doing. Miss Ava, Miss Un, saw to it that I was extensively educated on brewing tea. Clients don't need to know your lifestyle, life story, Chris. You're going to make some lucky woman very happy one day, Chris. You're already so clean and proper. That's enough, Ava. Is it my imagination, or did she just take a dig at me? Maurice, you still have a lot of growing up to do if you're letting a lady's remarks get under your skin. Nothing anyone could say faze me when I was your age. By then, I had my hands so full of beautiful, famous women that I hardly knew what to do with them all. <laughs> yeah, the one told me I had to get married just as I was. About to begin my own series of conquests. Did I? I'm so sorry if anything I said offended you, Morris. By the way, Chris, why don't you stop by my room later? Stop that, Ava. Huh. <laughs> I can't believe that guy lets his wife and kids run their mouths like that, right, Pops? Stop that, Maurice. Can you not see how difficult you are making matters for your father? Yeah, yeah, all right. That was yummy. What a healthy appetite you have, Lori. I'm proud of you now. Don't forget to ta thank them for the meal. Hey, can I have that too? Now that you mention it, there's another plate left over there, isn't there? I want them too, gimme! Okay, let's share it then. Half each. That's supposed to be for Sheringham. Hey Chris, where is Sheringham anyway? Mr. Sheringham is still resting in his room. I thought his trip must have exhausted him, so I refrained from knocking. So as to not wake him. Is, she, is the detective dead? Man, that would be something, isn't it? Wouldn't it? If the detective himself is dead. And we have to deduce his murder. Oh man, that'd be great. Well, that won't do. We were supposed to discuss our plans this morning. In that case, allow me. I'll go, fet go and fetch Mr. Shenningham right now. Ask him if he want still wants breakfast or not, too. Yeah, ask him. Good. Hear those brats screeching. It's giving me a damn headache. This is a hotel, not a kindergarten. Hear that? As if he isn't the biggest baby here. True, but don't you find his voice is somehow endearing in its own way? I can hear you, you know. Ah! <gasps> Was that Chris? Is the detective dead? Let's go! That can't be good news. I'm going too. You all here? What happened, Chris? I don't think I've heard ever heard you raise your voice before. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking straight. I'm all right now. But instead of telling you what happened, I think it would be faster if you saw for yourselves. Take a look inside Mr. Sheddingham's room. Sheddingham's room? Why? What happened? 
Oh, damn, he is dead. The detective got killed off in the first act. <laughs> he is. No way. Is he really dead? Looks like he's been dead for some time now. I'll seal the area up and go tell the others. Now, wouldn't it also be ironic if he faked his own death? So that way no one would know that he's there? So that he could in be in the shadows? Solving his own death? His own murder? To figure out who the real one is? That'd be great. Looks like he's been dead for some time now. I'll seal the area off and go tell the others. I already read that. I can't believe Shellingham is dead. I didn't examine his body too closely, but it sure didn't look like he died of natural causes. There might not be any point in asking, but do we know who saw him last? I wasn't technically the last to see him, but Mr. Shellingham did ask me to bring him some tea last night. And there's gotta be more to it than that, right? Well, don't be coy, this is an emergency. Just spit it out. Mr. Shellingham requested two teacups. Looks like there was someone else with him. Damn, man. He didn't know who it was. I, I couldn't tell. Mr. Shellingham was waiting for me outside his room. And he slipped back inside after I gave him the tea tray. I didn't get so much as a look at whoever was in there. Based on the way he acted, I thought he might be entertaining a woman. But I didn't give it much thought beyond that. What woman would he be entertaining? There's literally no other woman here besides everyone in this vicinity. Oh my, oh my. I didn't think you were still so innocent, Chris. The only possible clue I can think of is that he requested a left-handed teacup. Not that teacups are normally left to right-handed, but the handles for the cups we use here at the Gogetsukan are a little unusual. Mr. Shenningham appeared to be right-handed, so I think the left-handed one was for his guest. Huh, that's just perfect. The detective guy had more game than I thought. <laughs> I don't suppose you were the left-handed woman, what were you? How could you even ask me that, Maurice? That is hardly a fit subject for a joke, especially now. Besides, I'm right-handed. How could you not know that? I've been your stepmother for ten years. I'm tired to ask this now, but is anyone here left-handed? Why would the left-handed person admit they're left-handed? I'll take that as a no. Well, I guess it would be hard to get anyone to admit to that under the circumstances. Here's the thing, though. The person may not be necessarily left-handed, but they could be ambidextrous, which means they can use both. So they could have used either one. Interesting. Very interesting. Never mind who we might have been meeting with. This isn't going to affect our alliance, is it? No, unfortunate accidents aside, we will proceed with an engagement as scheduled once we regroup. You're kidding, right? We need to stop this deal and leave right now. Have someone pick us up at once. Unfortunately, we don't have any means of contacting anyone on mainland. No matter what happens, not going ahead with the engagement is not an option. You mean we're trapped here? But what if some something happens to my lawyer? No one will be coming to get us until two days from now. Until then, we will just have to make the best of things. That's quite alright with me. We can't have a little thing like this get in the way of our arrangement. I couldn't agree more. <sighs> what a relief. Man, you sure are desperate, huh? This alliance really m mean that much to you. Moise, that was going too far. Apologize right now. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, Mr. Ad Adamska. Anyway, we know the killer's here among us, right? Well, I'm not gonna let, let a little murder scare me. Looks like our decision to keep our personal to a minimum backfired. I never thought we would have a murder on our hands. I'm sorry to spoil your vacation, but please make sure you all say where you, we can see you as much as possible. If there's anything you need, we'll be happy to provide it. Alright, everyone as you were. I hope you will still be able to relax and enjoy yourselves. No, oh, I'm having a blast. Relax and enjoy ourselves. How on earth are we supposed to relax now? Say, Cell, if you don't have anything better to do, would you mind taking over for the, for the detective? 
Okay, okay, so I'm taking over as the detective now? I mean, I figured that was literally what's gonna happen, but straight to the point, huh? You defer to so many resources to security at this point that honestly, we don't have time to handle the investigation. Does that mean you don't suspect Cell at all? I saw them t take that ball to the face on the first day, not to mention the uproar that followed. There's no way anyone that clumsy, I uh, mean, anyone that inexperienced in self defense would be capable of. <laughs> I mean, just because a person isn't necessarily athletic doesn't mean that they can't be a murderer. I so badly wanted it to be me, because I figured that would be the best story possible, is that I am the murderer and I have to solve my own murder case because I have amnesia and I don't remember anything. That would be the best case scenario and make for a good story, but at the same time... I also then had to pin it on someone else. That'd be fun. Well, not that you need to be good at martial arts to kill someone, of course. Yeah, see, there we go. Whatever your reasons are, I absolutely agree that Cell can never kill anyone. I'll do it, I'll be a detective. This works out perfectly. <laughs> I'm the detective, so no one will figure out that I was the murderer. Well, now. It seems you have much more initiative than I thought, considering how quiet you seem. I agree, Cell is the right choice. Since they are not affiliated with either family, we can expect their judgment to be fair and impartial. Yes, but I, I'm more to lean on the side of Juliet's family because... I love her? That's the story I'm going with. Now then, shall we take a look at the crime scene? Much as I'd rather not, of course. Doctor. Wu asked me to help out as well. I'm not, I'm the only one here who can perform an autopsy. After all, well, lamentably, I have little in terms of space or equipment, so I must confine myself to a visual examination. That's a good point, okay. Let's go then. Please don't tell me that this is one of those locked room freaking puzzles that I've always seen on Detective Conan. <laughs> I'm never good at those. <laughs> They're all so just freaking elaborate. It's fun, but I never figure them out. He is pretty pale, but aside from that, he doesn't really look dead. Yes, again, he could be faking it to suss out the true suspect of his own murder. I'm still going with that. If that's what you think, try checking his wrist. Okay, just in case. No, you're right. He doesn't have a pulse. Did you want to check the, his wrist too, Cell? I mean, I'm kind of fine with not. Aren't you scared? Of course I'm scared, but I also kind of feel like I'm partly to blame for his death. You look even paler than he does, Juliet. Why don't you go back to your room and get some rest? Let's still let me handle this. No, I'll stay. I wouldn't be any less scared sitting alone in my room. Alright, if you insist. Anyway, I believe we have sufficiently verified that he is, in fact, dead. Yes, but there is a way to stop the heart function for a little bit. Given how much his body is cooled, I'd put his time of death at about midnight. Of course, the cause of death will be more important than the time. What do you think, Doctor? Poison would seem the most likely answer. Still, I can't tell what sort of poison or how it entered his bloodstream. The tea that was brought to him by Chris. There were two key tea cups. So, it could have been a roulette. I'm afraid that's all I can say at this point. That's all, isn't there anything else? I may be a doctor. But I must admit that this isn't exactly my area of expertise. I can't even be sure whether its poison was mixed into food or drink, or if he was injected with it somehow. It would be one thing if I had my toxic substance detection reagent here with me, but... I'm sorry to interrupt. It looks like today is going to be rather warm. 
So what about we right if we move to Mr. Sheringham's body soon? All right, I do apologize. You must have a lot to do without us wait, uh, waiting around for us. All right, I do apologize. You must have a lot to do without waiting around for us. Never mind that, Doctor. What about the poison? If the killer poison is for the drink, what to stop them from doing the same two hours? I doubt there will be any poison in food as long as we is cooking. But if you're worried, I'd be happy to taste it first to put you at ease. What? How can you smile about that? If it really is poison, you can end up dead yourself. The Marvel Company took me in when I was just a baby. Of course I've laid down my life for them. But it's your life. You only get one, you know. You can't just throw it all away like that. With all due respect, Miss Juliet, the Marvel Company is like family to me, and Miss Ahn may as well be my mother. There is no difference between me risking my life for them, and you marrying someone you don't love for your family. Yes, there is. It's not the same thing at all. My apologies. I should never have said that. Forgive me. It's okay. I'm over it. That was fast. All right. Now that the autopsy is over, we should take Mr. Shanningham's body out of here. We can use the basement. It's a little desolate, but it's the best option we have. I'll take the body down there now. Hold it. Sir. Cell and I can carry the body ourselves. But, I'm well aware that the mobile company doesn't have enough hands to go around right now. There's no need for you to concern yourself with this, when we are perfectly capable of doing it ourselves. All I ask in, ex in exchange is that you make us a nice pot of tea, that we cannot do ourselves after all. In that case, I'd be glad to take you up on that. What kinds of tea do you have? I'm afraid we have limited selection, but I'm certain something will be to your liking. Hmm, is it okay if I choose it myself? Of course. Alright, let's be on our way. We'll wait for Dr. Hawthorne and your friend in the reception room. Now, let's wrap the body up in a sheet and get it down to the basement. Mind taking the legs. Alright, let's go. There we are. <sighs> that certainly changed the lower back, doesn't it? Yet another reminder that I'm not getting any younger. Anyway, this should be a good place for Mr. Shanningham to rest in peace. It should be cool enough down here to minimize decay. Chris certainly wasn't kidding when he said it was desolate. In fact, it's not very chilling in here, and I don't just mean it in terms of temperature. At any rate, it's finally just the two of us. Huh? Don't tell me you were the killer. No, no, nothing like that. I merely wanted to talk to you in private. It's better if Juliet doesn't hear this, you see. I've known Juliet since she was a baby. Her mother and I go way back. Did you used to date her or something? Not like that. There was never anything between us. Hmm, that sounds rather sad now that I said that. Anyway, she was very popular. Boring men like myself never had a chance. Besides, she was the pride and joy of the fam famous Violet family. I was far too scared to even think about asking her on a date. Still, I was lucky that she did me see me as a friend. She even kept up with me after she married the Domska. In fact, she was the only one who chose me to be the Violet family's doctor after her daughters were born. I owe a great debt to the Violet family for providing me with a steady income for so many years, which is why I'm so reluctant to bring this up. I'm guessing the Goldie and Violet families came across the typical members of the upper class to you. But they are, in fact, two of the oldest crime families in the country. All that they have is built upon violence and blood money. However, in the past few years, they found themselves in a dangerous position. For a long time, they were fighting each other tooth and nail for the control of a certain city. But now both are under attack from a new enemy, and that attack has exhausted their resources. The way things are going, they probably won't last another ten years. At worst, they'll both co collapse. So the heads of both families are arrived at the same conclusion. They will need to form an alliance and a merger of sorts. They needed a way to ensure neither would betray the other, and they decided the way best way to do that was to have their oldest children marry. So it's a political marriage. Yes, that's probably the best way to put it. I'm still a bachelor myself, but I had to care for those girls as if they were my own. 
Sometimes I can't help but wish Juliet was as free-spirited as her mother. She agreed to a marriage she doesn't want, purely to help her family. It really grinds my gears. And to make matters worse, while you've met Maurice, how do you think he will be as a husband? I think he'll make Juliet very unhappy. I concur. Maurice is no more than a thug who goes about picking fights over every perceived slight to his fragile ego. It perceives many. Unfortunately, he is not the only one like that in the Goldie and Violet families, far from it. And those other thugs aren't happy about this merger. They're too concerned with what happened in the past, what's happening right now, to give any thought to the future. In fact, many of them would rather have an all-out war than team up with an enemy. Both Aaron and Adamska are under a lot of pressure from their men not to go through with this. That's why Aaron decided to bring in the Marble Company. Any deal with the Marble Company is present for always goes through after all. Nobody in that city would voice an objection to this engagement with the Marble Company backing it. While this is ostensibly a four-day family trip, the true purpose here is to close the deal between these two families in secret. But then, why am I here? Of course, she has every right to go ahead with this marriage if that's what she's decided. But I don't want her to make a choice she'll end up regretting. Still, she's many years ahead of her, and there's no telling what may happen down life's winding road. If Juliet ever ends up reaching out to you for help, I hope you will be there for her. No, oh, I will. Not that I have any business telling you this, as I do not have the guts to take a chance to get properly turned down by my own youthful crush. Now then, we'd better get back. I imagine Juliet is waiting for us with our tea. Probably with a dead body. Will you let me through? Just a sec. Got something I want to talk to you about first. It looks like they're arguing about something. Let's go see what's up. Oh wait, what is it? Let me just be straight with you here. Your sister's more my type and I want you to trade places with her. That's not something you and I can decide by ourselves. I just thought it'd suck for you if you'd already fallen for me, so I figured I'd bring it up early. Still, this doesn't look like it being blunt's your thing anyway, so I don't see you answering me honestly regardless. Of course, if you're set on it, I don't mind doing it with you either. You're easy on the eyes. You're disgusting. What are you going to do about this cell? Is there a ball I can kick at him anywhere? I wonder if he's got a gun. That's enough, Mr. Moise. Ah, oh, crap. It's a pretty boy with the grip of steel. Fine, I'll get out of your hair before he breaks my arm or something. I'm gonna go for a walk alone. <laughs> yes, walk alone. You know, with a chance of dying. I mean, hey, this mo's a guy apparently. <laughs> so, uh, I don't really care what happens to Mo in this story. Are you all right? I'm all right. I'm sick to my stomach. Chris, Doctor, would you mind going on ahead? Well, if that's what you want, come along, Chris. Yes, sir. Thanks, I'll be there before my tea gets cold. I'm so sorry I told you this was just a family trip when I asked you to come along, Cell. I thought he might be awful, but he's a little worse than I had expected. You're putting on a really strong face. <laughs> that's your response, you're so silly. Usually you're really quiet, but today you're something else. Heh, <laughs> thank you, Cell. I feel a little better now. But you know, I've had a good life. Growing up in this family is thanks to them that I got into our school, and I would never would have met you if I hadn't gone there. I'm grateful to them for that. So I cannot run away from my duties now. I'm the eldest daughter, after all. We could run away from all this together. We could away from run away from- wait, what? I literally can't choose anything but this. I'll choose the bottom one. That's sweet of you, but I can't. If I bring it, my sister would have to take my place. I can't do that to her. Hey, what's with the look? I didn't bring you along so you can make faces at me. 
Huh, no cell, you mustn't sell. Cell, hang in there. Oh, am I going back to Caldea? Yep. Oh, that was quick. You weren't even asleep for an hour. Is that all? Could have sworn it was much longer. It would seem that time passes differently in your dream world. How unfortunate. I was just thinking how helpful more data would be. Now then, what happened over there? Uh, you died. That was when Julia shoved you, and you fell unconscious. Hmm, how unfortunate for you, still. <laughs> it seems someone else was even more unfortunate, still. What a <laughs> tragic turn of events. Don't you agree, Shining Hub? Oh, my apologies, I don't know how I got those names mixed up. Holmes, the great Sherlock Holmes rubbed out in the first act. Not even I would have ever seen it coming. <laughs> Senpai, I've never seen a professor so euphoric before. I kind, of, I kind of understand how he feels. I know, it's like he rediscovered his inner child. But it's it. It gets. Ouch. <laughs> I do beg your pardon. But I'm trying to think. Would you kindly keep it down? Still, I must say I'm disappointed to hear the detective was the first to step off the stage. Detective work is fraught with danger. Any gentleman worth his salt should have known to master a martial art or two for his own self-defense. Poor Shanningham clearly needed more training. You're one to talk, given that your self-defense consists of shielding yourself with the culprit. That aside, something about Shanningham's death nags at me. It would make more sense that had it been anyone else. What do you mean, Professor? Assuming that whoever made the threats is among the characters, Shanningham's survival must have thrown a wrench in their plans. Let's further assume that the culprit made a number of preparations in the Kogetsu Khan. Assuming they have done so, then murdering Shanningham puts their culprit in a bit of a bind, since they had not prepared anything for him in advance. Which means they must have made a mistake somewhere. I certainly understand the desire to rid oneself of an unwelcome visitor, but I can't say I approve of this rushed, artless approach. I see, so the copper wouldn't just as soon have not committed this murder unless they had no choice. Does that mean Holmes's death was a spur of the moment decision? Shanningham, Miss Kiraito, I assure you, I am still very much alive. Indeed. I doubt that culprits is in a position to simply gallivant about, murdering as they please. As soon as someone dies, the survivors become more, much more wary, so serving only to complicate the act of carrying out your intended murder. Assuming this is not a matter of vengeance, your first victim should always be the one you had intended to kill from the start. But that wasn't true for Shellingham. He was involved with e He was not involved with either of the families. Killing him now must have been a deeply bitter pill for the culprit to swallow. Um, why do you think Shillingham has killed Professor? You need to ask. He was in the culprit's way, obviously. Believe me, I can understand how they felt. If an unbearably smug-looking detective showed up like he was running the show amid one of my own schemes, I'd want to send him home in a coffin, too. The detective's presence carries with it the risk of interference in the culprit's plans, or having them exposed once those plans are carried out. Detectives represent any number of problems for you, for criminals you know. Exposing of them before the plot truly begins is absolutely the best course. That's terrible. Though as I am to admit it, I have to agree, if I were a criminal, I would do the same thing. Furthermore, by killing the detective off first, the person who made the threat has shown they are not afraid to get their hands dirty. Come to think of it, there was no development on our end while you were off in Dreamland, Miss Cell. I wasn't able to track down the Marble Company, but I did find two other corporations named Goldie Company and Violet Incorporated. They are both headquartered in a major American city, and have vied for control over it for quite some time. The CEOs of the two companies are listed as Aaron Goldie, in a dumb sky violet, it all lines up perfectly. Though unfortunately, I was unable to find any information about their families. That doesn't surprise me. Any decent underworld organization leader knows that their enemies can get to them through their families, and are sure to keep a tight lid on information regarding them. 
And this is really happening right now, not in the past and the future, in a singularity. Indeed. I'm still doing everything I can to find out more about them. I'll make sure to have more detailed information about the next time you wake up. Is that the best world a detective can do? Give me one of the command room's terminals and I'll have the answers for you in an instant. Ha! Huh. I can never be so full so intoxicated as to hand over the master key to a known thief. Besides, not even I couldn't get into the command room's mainframe. That is a black box if I have ever seen one. Uh oh. Time to sleep. I think I'm getting sleepy again. Holmes, Professor, Sempa looks like she's about to drift off again. Well now, it seems we've droned on a bit too long. Based on what you've told us, it's clear who Sheddingham was meeting with. Try to stay awake a little longer and I'll tell you what I know. Too, too late. Complete 10 quests completed. Huh, cool. No hither, no hither to, no hither to undiscovered poisons may be used. There is a lot to go through, and I kind of feel like this is enough for an episode in and of itself. Literally an anime episode. Eh, a little bit longer than that. But, the show must go on. If I don't do two parts in this episode, I probably never will be able to. I mean, it would take me a lot longer to finish it. No hitherto undiscovered poisons may be used. It's clear who Shanahan was meeting with. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. If no one there is left-handed, that tells us all we need to know about his guest. But couldn't the culprit just use a non-dominant hand to cover things up? Perhaps when meeting someone for the first time, yes. But you're unlikely to be able to hide your dominant hand from someone you've spent a deal of time with. But the notable exception is Shenningham. Each of the characters here belongs to his or her respective communities. Factions, if you like. You attended a meal where everyone was present, right? There was a South Park present who suddenly began using the right hand. Someone would have said something. Given that did not happen, we can conclude that no one there is left-handed. I do so hate to nitpick, but what if someone there is secretly ambidextrous? It wouldn't make any difference, Professor. An ambidextrous person by definition would have no issue using the right hand. But according to Chris, Sheddingham specifically requested a left-handed teacup for his guest. Would this have n been necessary if they could simply use their right hand? If you haven't answered that question, I'm happy to hear it. Huh. So my playing the devil's advocate only strengthened your case. Well, no matter. I actually do happen to agree with you. Do go on. Well, if one were to nitpick any of my hypothesis, I cannot deny the possibility that Sheddingham could have been meeting with Miss Cell. And Senpai is the culprit? <laughs> Did I call that? I was already asleep! <laughs> it seems I may have touched the nerve. Not to worry, that possibility is extremely remote. I can't speak for your dreams body's original owner, of course. But based on what you told us, you wouldn't have had the time. What about a third party? Some mysterious character who is still hiding in, out in the Kogetsukan somewhere. No need for such intricacies, Miss Kukiru Raito. Occam's Razor provides us with a perfectly reasonable explanation. There's a character here who needs to use his left hand, thanks to the injury he suffered on his right. Maurice. Chris injured Maurice's right hand. So he was forced to use his left. <laughs> okay, I see where you're going with this now. Hey, yeah! Maurice! Most likely, Shanningham noticed Maurice's injured right hand and requested the left handed cup out of consideration. But then, why would Shanningham feel a need to hide his meeting with Maurice from Chris? Ah, oh, but here I am afraid you have it backwards, Miss Kiriraito. Sheringham wasn't trying to hide Maurice from Chris. It was Chris that he was trying to hide from Maurice. In point of fact, at least he wished to hide that Chris was bringing the tea. Chris was also the one responsible for Maurice's injury, and 
After all, Jenningham would have known that so much as hearing Chris's voice could easily put Maurice in a foul mood. And as a detective, he would also be aware that info information often freely given is, is all but impossible to drag out of someone when they are in a foul mood. But Maurice never said anything about meeting with Shanningham. Why would they? Given what Miss Sell has told us so far, we know that Maurice is both distrustful and simple-minded. It is no surprise that he would try to hide his meeting with someone who is now dead. Speaking up now would only arouse suspicion. Even Maurice, no doubt, realizes that others are prone to think the worst of him. Up, oh, I'm sorry, but I can't hang out, hold out much any longer. Senpai! It would seem we are out of time, but at least we were able to cover the most pressing matters, albeit briefly. Be sure to keep everything we discuss in mind as you go about investigating this incident. Remember, you are assuming the role of another person. Even if you cannot take any decisive action yourself, you can still keep a close eye on the events that play you out around you. You'd do well not to forget that. Right. Every good detective starts get by gathering information after all. I know it's technically a dream for you, Master, but please do your best to stay alert. Oh, I'll try my best, alright. We're going back with newfound information about Maurice. I've completely forgot that he had his right hand injured, so he'd be the only one that would use his left for drinking tea. Ah, oh, good, you're awake. I was quite taken aback to learn you passed out after Juliet shoved you. I'm so sorry, Cell. I guess I'm no better than kind. Thank you for carrying Cell on this way, Chris. Not at all. My purpose here is to be of service. At least now I know who Shanningham is meeting with. Do you now? Did you receive a flash of insight while you were asleep? Uh, yeah, technically. Well, come on, who was it? It was Maurice. I see, it does sound like it could have been Maurice. Indeed, we do know that Maurice injured his right hand. And it may have gotten worse after I, in a misguided feat of m machoism, he refused treatment. If only I had known my own strength. Hey, don't beat yourself up. It turned out to be for the best. Now we know who Miss Shanningham met with. Hey, Chris. You, you've seen Maurice anywhere. No, I haven't. We were actually just looking for him ourselves. I see. I've been turning the mansion upside down looking for him. But no dice. Maurice said that he was going for a walk. How's about Maurice is the one who dies? Come on, Moda! Kogetsu Khan, don't let me down! I don't know why I want Mo to die. <laughs> I just feel like it'd be more interesting this way. Is there a problem? Hey, sis, the truth is. I see. You might have come back after the fact. I'll keep looking around the mansion. You and Chris go check outside. Got it. I'll help you too. Come on, Cell. We've caught up in letting the place go to seed, so it's a bit of a jungle right now. You call this a bit? Jungles? Jaguars? Ugh, my head. There's no dent down here. This would be a perfect place to lay low. Or to hide a dead body. I don't know about that. Not with these things running around out here. You'd better chase them away, Chris. Right. You know, this is also really interesting, because I literally cannot use my own servants. The, the Kogetsu Khan literally forces you to use other characters that are not your servants. Well, if you don't have them. And this is a perfect example of... You gotta test your might. Are you capable of figuring this stuff out for yourself? If you are, you can survive. If you can't figure it out, how to use your own new character, you're basically screwed if you can't continue. At least a full brain can take out the wolf. Alright. GG's. Goodbye. We managed to beat all three of the gray wolves with barely, well, barely taking the damage. But man, I've completely lost the voice. I ever tried to give Sherlock Holmes in a. Uh, uh, 
Moriarty. I'm completely lost. Oh, hey, we're almost leveled up. Nice. Means I'm gonna have to spend twice as much AP as well. Ha! Huh. Well, you made those wolves look about as dangerous as puppies. Hey, no. No sense killing them. Wolves aren't good to eat. Trust me. Just need to chase them away. That's where I'm all done here. Same. Still no sign of the potential sun, no. All I'm seeing out here is more wild animals. I guess he isn't out here after all. This can be a great place to lay low, but not for a pampered city boy. He could try, but he'd just end up wolf food if he did catch my drift. Don't say things like that, it's just scaring me. Don't worry, Miss Juliet. We haven't seen any signs that what Mr. Maurice was attacked. If he's not out here, that just leaves the sea. But I really doubt he'd be out there. There are strong currents out there, and we're much too far from the mainland for an amateur to swim for it. Guess there was no sense looking out here. Let's go back. Finally, they're gone. I'm impressed. It looks like those bodyguards really do live up to their reputation. Well, 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 a mystery person. We're back. Oh, hey, any luck? I'm afraid not. We didn't see any sign of him anywhere. Where's Maurice? Has ha hasn't anyone found him yet? Honestly, I think you've had a little too much to drink. Shut up. No way am I making it through this without a stiff drink. I can't believe Maurice is missing. Our first priority is to keep all, all of you safe, so I'm afraid we can only spare so many resources to look for Maurice. What could be a higher priority than Maurice's life? He's my heir, you know. Daddy, why is Maurice missing? No, oh, no, Roy. Be quiet. Is it because he killed a detective guy? <laughs> Dang, Lloyd! Ratting out your brother! Don't well, say things like that, Lloyd. But I saw him coming out of the detective guy's room last night. Yeah, you don't mean that, right, Lloyd? You and I were both asleep at the same time. I woke up pretty late and snuck out. When I did, I saw him leave the detective guy's room. Could come now. We're not going to take the word of a child seriously for something so important, are we? We don't want to believe it e ourselves, Erin. But don't you think she might be telling the truth? But there's nothing to gain by l her lying. Even if she did see him coming out of his room, that's not proof Maurice killed Sheringham. Honey, please calm down. It seems I let my emotion get the better of me. I'm sorry you had to see that. Not at all. I should be apologizing for my lack of tact. We may not be able to say for sure whether Maurice is the killer, but wherever he is, he, there is every chance that he decides to stay in hiding now. If he does, the consequences for the Goldie family could be devastating, and our arrangement would come to a grinding halt. We would much rather not come to that as well. All right. Given the circumstances, I have a confession to make. Not even my wife, Dorothy, knows about this. Honey, you talking about honey? I was hoping to take this with me to my grave, but it seems that's no longer an option. The truth is, I'm Chris's father. Huh? Mr. Heron. Chris, from the look on your face, I see the company never told you. I was once young and foolish myself. I calmed down somewhat once I married, but I did still have a bit, a bit of a habit spending the nights with women who really caught my eye. That's how you were born, Chris, but by then I had already married na my now ex-wife, and we'd had Morty's together. I couldn't take you in under those circumstances, so I asked the mobile company to look after you. Of course, I agreed to pay for your upbringing as well. I had no idea. Maurice will, of course, always be the apple of my eye. But I'm the head of the Goldie family and so must always do what is necessary for its survival. Wait a second. You're not seriously telling us to hand over Chris, are you? The damn right I am. You're the ones who let Shunningham die and failed to stop Maurice from running away. 
If anyone is responsible for this mess, it's the mobile company. That's absolutely right. Fortunately, Chris is still an apprentice. We can afford to let him go. You're still calling him an apprentice after all the time we spent training him. Besides this, you've always seemed very fond of him. That's enough, Woo. I guess this is a done deal then. Alright, I got it. Looks like you're in luck, Chris. One of these days you'll be taking over for the whole Goldie family. Naturally, I'll be happy to compensate you for the loss. I want to remain on good terms with the mobile company after all. Wait, Miss An, please let me finish my job here first. It's the least I can do to pay the company back. Alright, I'll continue to treat you as a mobile company man until we leave this island. Nobody is treating the man I've named my successor as a common serve. No, never mind. I can see this is a matter of integrity. I will permit it this one time. Miss An, thank you for everything. I'll never forget what you did for me. Hold on, if Chris is joining the Goldie family then, that would mean Chris would be the one to marry Juliet. Juliet will instead be engaged to Chris. That will serve to fulfill our mutual goal. Huh? No way. What's the problem? This is turning out to be a good deal. You should be happy about it. Miss Juliet, I know I still have a lot to learn, but I hope I can earn your trust in time. Oh, uh, okay, that sounds nice. Don't be so subservient, Chris. You don't need to worry about what other people think of you now. You'll be running the Goldie No, the Goldie and the Violet families one day. <laughs> uh huh. What a delectable dinner. I'm afraid I had a bit too much to eat, though. I'll have to take some antacids. Huh. Is that the wrong, my dear? Do you need some antacids, too? No, that's okay. It's not my stomach. Oh, yes. You must have a lot on your mind right now. Plus, it's in the new terms of your engagement. But I dare say, this was a lucky break. I know I would say much rather Mary Chris than Maurice. Don't you agree, Cell? It is kind of sudden, but Chris does seem to be a good guy. Are you serious? Why are you all happy about this? What's wrong with you? Where are you going, Juliet? I'm going to my room. Just leave me alone. Good grief, as long as I've lived, I still don't understand women. Still, she's right. I shouldn't have said that. I'll go apologize to her. Huh? I had the whole thing. Pretty sorry sight. Is there something wrong with Chris? Oh no, I'm sure he'll make a great husband. Julia knows that too. But it's just not that simple. Then again, I guess that it's that naivety of yours that tucked in her heartstrings in the first place. Exactly, now that she doesn't have to marry Maurice, there was still a slight chance that she could have married someone else, aka me. <laughs> huh, Juliet and I are just friends. Look, it doesn't matter what you think, okay? This is about how Juliet feels. Did you know she hardly has any friends? In fact, you're the only one she's got left. Huh? You really don't know. Didn't you ever run into some shady people at college trying to scare you about us? You know, people warning you that even though the Violet family is famous, there are a lot of nasty rumors about us. Warning you that spending time around a daughter of that family will mess up your chances at a good life. Stuff like that. I'm pretty sure some Goldie family supporters were behind it. It was a really cheap move on their part. But I can't say the rumors were all complete fabrications either. You do have to get nasty sometimes to keep control of an entire city. Our way of life is built upon the blood, sweat, and tears of many people, some of them dead. We're mostly used to things being that way, but Juliet's always had a harder time with it. That's why everyone who opposed her just because she was the pretty daughter of a wealthy family ended up running away. Julia knew about her family's reputation too, of course, though she understood when people she thought of as friends stopped spending time with her. But understanding why doesn't make things any easier. It really devastated her even to the point where she'd cry herself to sleep sometimes. That's why she was so glad when he didn't let these rumors drive you away. Honestly, I don't know what she would have done without you. In that sense, you're very special to her. 
And so I hope she'll remain her friend as long as you're still okay with it. Well, good night then. I said I might as well lie down. Good night. Go back to Caldera? It's great being a kid. Nobody gets mad at you for clowning around. And you don't have to work like grown-ups do. But the best part is that nobody ever suspects you. Someone's here. There you are. First thing out of bed again. Now I find you hiding in this pitch dark room. Oh, hi, Mommy. Looks, looks like she found this kind. Yep, guess so. Oh, Lori. I was so worried I didn't see you after anywhere after I woke up. You have to tell me when you want to play hide and seek. But she always makes me go to bed early. I want to stay up and keep playing. Sorry, Lori. But the game's over once you're found. We'll just have to pick this up tomorrow. Thank you, kind. Maurice never plays with her like this. She's so happy to have a new big brother. <laughs> I like being a big brother, too. My sister's always been weirdly grown up, I guess. I can see that. Alright. It's getting late. Time to go back to bed. Okay. Alright, I'm going to sleep, too. Now, where's that light switch? Yep, I love being a kid. No one ever suspects the kid. Heh, heh, heh. So it was Juliet's brother. Good morning, Senpai. What happened this time? So our fair princess finds herself betrothed to a not a common ruffian, but a perfect prince now. I suppose it does make for a happy ending of sorts, but in narrative terms, it still seems lacking. I think this is a wonderful development myself. I was so happy for Juliet I could burst. But then again, I guess this isn't really the time to be saying that sort of thing, is it? Now it's getting him murdered and Maurice missing. There is presently little dis sense in discussing Maurice's possible whereabouts. There are more important matters to discuss. Indeed, namely the surprise reveal of a new Goldie family heir, which may make him a new target. Ah. Uh. If the culprit's go goal is to prevent the two families from coming together, it's quite possible they were involved in Maurice's disappearance as well. If that is so, the revelation about Chris will have completely blindsided them. As such, they may need to resort to brute force once again. Another unexpected development today, between a detective's sudden appearance and the surprise of Chris's parentage, it would seem that luck is against our dear criminal. It's when they thought they had eliminated the Goldie family sole heir. A new candidate presents himself. If the culprit is going to make another move, it will almost certainly be a night. They won't want to miss this opportunity after all. I expect they'll either go after Chris or Juliet. I mean, Juliet might end up dead. I gotta get back there now and stop them. Then by stop, please don't bring... Bang your head against the wall. You can give yourself a concussion. <laughs> I mean, we gotta protect Juliet, right? Calm down, Miss Cell. Even should you manage to knock yourself out, there is no guarantee that you will wake up at the Kugetsukon straight away. At any rate, you need to seal yourself for whatever tragedy may come next if you want to continue your investigation with a clear mind. So, of course, it would be best if there were no more tragedies at all. Yeah, it would be best. But there probably is going to be many more tragedies to come. And now here's the thing. It could potentially be Juliet's brother Kain. Or it could be Maurice's little sister, Lori. Both of them were there at the same time. Both of them are kids. I don't know. I'm, I'm still enjoying this. No strange foreigners must figure in this story. Alright, okay, well with that, I'm going to end this episode here. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next one, where we will do the next two sections to the story. And then next one. Okay, so if we do two in one episode every time, we should be done with the entire story, I believe, on section nine. And in three days, give or take, possibly. So yeah, till then, see you guys later.